of Knowledge and Nourishment. I'm Rita Walters. I'm Vice President for Advancement and Alumni Relations at Union Theological Seminary. And we are so glad that you are joining us today and welcome. Today, we have an exciting program for you for the next 45 minutes that we are together. Um, I encourage you to ask some questions, put those questions in the Q&A. We're going to be able to get to everyone, we hope. Um, and so I'm gonna get out of the way and introduce this amazing, amazing um, colleagues of mine, both student colleagues as well as um, work colleagues. We're going to be leading today's discussion around all of the exciting things we're doing in the fall to foster communication and welcome you either back to campus or welcome you for the very first time to our community. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, our entire panel for today. I'll start with Charlene Visconti. Charlene is our Dean of Students and she just waved there, right? We also have Carmen Smith. Carmen is the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Enrollment, right? Hello, Carmen. We also have our student ministers, student senate ministers of fun. It's like the perfect name for today's discussion. Um, they are both Ryan Felder, who can live a wave, and Bridget uh, Webster. Yeah, welcome to you both. We also have our student senate uh, co-chairs that are joining us today, and they are Nordia Bennett, hello Nordia, and Hannah Irvin. Welcome to you all. So why don't we get started right away with Charlene. So Charlene, do you mind setting the stage with us and giving us an overview of what we are, are to expect um, for the coming fall? Sure, thanks Rita. So hello everybody. Um, I think to start out, I should tell you all that we are welcoming students back to campus. We have a new residence hall that's opening, a newly uh, refurbished residence hall that's opening. And, we, so, and we'll have students in both that hall and, and in our longstanding McGifford Hall. We're also welcoming staff back to um, the office. We haven't been fully closed, but many people have been working remotely and people are gonna st slowly start coming back so that there's a, a larger presence of staff um, you know, in the academic building. We're hoping very much to continue some of our time-honored traditions in, in a way that's now uh, appropriate for the public health protocols. So we're still gonna have community lunch, but it'll be <coughs> grab and up oh, less, but it'll be grab and go. <laughs> grab and go. And um, we're also, um, Dr. Montez is working very hard with her, her uh, chaplain team, chapel team to see what we can do about socially distanced regular worship services. And there will be an opportunity for students on campus to, to meet with advisors and faculty in a limited basis. Everything I say, of course, is based on the appropriate public health protocols at the time. So in the residence hall, we're gonna have student life assistance as we always do, and they're gonna be responsible for programming. We're opening the residence halls to commuter students as well, because we're gonna have some nice community spaces there. And uh, we'll do some socially distanced appropriate programming. We have an art room, we have a TV room, there's study space. And so we're hoping that this will allow both our residential students and our commuter students um, to continue to engage with each other. While I'm talking about student leaders, I think I'd also like to mention that we have a new program this year that was uh, spearheaded and developed actually by our uh, student senate and particularly last year's student senate co-chairs and it's the peer chaplain program. We have somebody here with us today. Bridget is one of our new peer chaplains and maybe she'll speak a little bit about it later. But this program is um, going to be providing online communication with students, at least in the beginning, it'll be remotely. They're supervised by one of our interfaith um, ministers, uh, Reverend Bertram Johnson, and they'll be working independently on their own programming, as well as in cooperation, I think, with all of our other student leaders. Um, I think I wanna just say a couple of more things about other programming. From our perspective, of course, what we're trying to do is allow students to engage as best as possible around things other than the classroom, either in new initiatives or social, uh, uh, social events. And so there's two other things that I think will help us to do that. And the first is um, we have a very robust 
career development program that we launched in the summer. And we have some, and we send monthly emails out and we have someone who's doing not only one-to-one -one career coaching, but also lots of group work with students on a number of different things that are relevant to developing your career interests. And um, as well as she's starting a, a sort of a six week program with a defined group of students around career exploration. So we're looking forward to um, expanding that programming as everybody comes back. And then the last thing I will say before I hand it over to the students who have a lot to offer, I know, um, is that Columbia Health is gonna be full service, continue to be full service. And one of the important things that they're doing and that they've enhanced is their health promotions programming. All of their health promotions programming will be online and they are also offering a number of wonderful group sessions around just the kind of thing that Rita was talking about, how do we support students? And uh, to that end, they're doing things around how do you support the isolation? How do couples live together in this kind of isolated setting? What do you do about sleep disorders and time management and a number of things like that? So then another way for students to connect in groups very informally. Um, so we're looking, we, we know it's not ideal, right? We know that people are tired at the end of the day and things are still going to have to be online, at least for the beginning until we get better guidance um, from, from um, the state about group meetings. But we still believe that we can continue to foster community. We're welcoming a number of new students and we want them to get, get involved and, and be engaged. So, so now I'm gonna hand it over to the, um, the student senators. Sorry, I think I was muted there. Um, I would love to start with a question. And thank you so much, Charlene, for that. It was quite informative. Um, I would like to start with a question for our students, all of them, if you wouldn't mind answering, um, before we sort of dive in a little bit deeper. Um, tell me about how have you been managing this summer? How have you been handling the grieving process of not being able to be together? Um, as some of the things that Charlene has mentioned. Yeah, Ryan, do you mind starting? Yeah, wow, right into my feelings. I was like tearing up a little bit, <laughs> thinking about missing everyone. Um, geez, that's not how I plan on starting. Um, <laughs> I am, um, you know, this summer, I think I was able to stay really connected with students. I feel like I was more connected this summer than I was last summer by like Ooh. exponentially. Um, and that was remaining involved um, in student caucuses um still doing like zoom happy hours with people yeah. it was literally this summer in june of when the protests start <clears throat> the black lives matter protests started like actually meeting up with students in those moments and um caring for each other in those ways um so yeah i feel like yeah it's it's been remarkably easy and hard um like both like hard to be away from people but easy once uh you just like express that you miss people and you want to be in contact with people. And there's like this, such like this like beautiful, like shared interest of still remaining in touch. This, in my experience, that's what I've found. Now, did all of you stay in New York this summer? Are some of you in New York? Others, are you other places or? Everyone's in New York. I know Ryan was in New York. Ryan, yeah. I'm in California. Oh, right. So Bridget, do you want to go next and share? How has it been being 3,000 miles away from your classmates? <laughs> yeah, that part has been tricky. It has been tricky. Um, even navigating like time differences, that's been tricky. But really what has helped me is having a schedule. So like scheduling in times with my friends um, because I am far away um, and because there is a time difference, um, having a schedule and saying, like, okay, I'd love to meet at this time. It'll be this time, my time, this time, your time. Right. Um, and having these Zoom interactions, that's been really helpful for me, really, really helpful with staying connected to the community. Nadia, what about you? And thank you for getting up so early, Bridget, because it's 9 a.m. in California. So thank you for being on this call. Um, I think I haven't FaceTimed that much in a long time, <laughs> at least last couple of months. <laughs> Um, I've never been on my phone as much as I've been now. Um, but I think because I'm in Harlem still, um, 
I've been finding like creative ways to interacting with certain mm-hmm. moms and my peers that are still in the city. So um, we try to social distance by going to like the farmer's market on Saturdays um, or the park or six feet, apart, six feet apart at the park or just go on walks. But I think I've been just trying to find more ways of like being more in our bodies as much as we can uh-huh. with being in outdoors um, because it can get exhausting <laughs> um, FaceTiming because as much as you want to talk to them sometimes you don't want to because of just being on the like visual on the computers all the time but so far it's been it's been it's been good great thank you thank you for sharing that um Hannah I see your bike in the background so (laughs) yeah yeah that was was of some things you may have been doing A pandemic purchase and I live in a small Harlem apartment so um, we practically share a bed (laughs) Um, so uh, yeah that was that was really helpful at the beginning Mm. of the pandemic I actually um, ended up moving off campus in the middle of February so really perfect timing Um, so I have been able to ride my bike to Union and um, go on walks with people in the park, um, especially once um, when there were more students living there. Um, so students have, you know, trickled off because either they graduated or are um, returned home or elsewhere for the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was that was really life saving. Yeah. Um, and I think Ryan also spoke to the the protests. Ryan and Nordia and I have been at protests together, run into each other. Um, at the first protest I saw Ryan at, I accidentally hugged him. Uh, <laughs> I was so excited um, to see him in the flesh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Nordia and I were both on the uh, exec team last year. Um, so mm-hmm. a lot of that was just, you know, holding space. Um, Sometimes we didn't have an agenda and it was mostly just hopping onto Zoom and, you know, saying, share your feelings or um, what book are you reading? What song is um, holding you or propelling you forward? Um, And I've also been doing, yeah, like Zoom and FaceTime dates with friends. We try to come up with some sort of like, um, not theme, but shared, intention so either like a coffee date um so we'll say you know 10 a.m bring your coffee um and so that way we have kind of uh something that unites us um and i was supposed to be doing a unit of cpe this summer um at mount sinai and that got canceled um so i actually took an emt class this summer and that was a really wonderful way to be in community with people mm-hmm. and I, actually, uh, I also took it with them brandon Royker, who's an orientation leader um mm-hmm. who is watching right now so i know i'm gonna get a text message <laughs> but um it was really awesome to be able to connect with him in that way and also bring in our um you know mdiv backgrounds into this like medical field um and kind of connect deeper to the pandemic in that way Um, so those are kind of the ways that i've been trying to stay connected it's not easy but we're doing yeah it isn't and thank you all for sharing and if there's some of you who are listening now that you want to also share with us um, please put it in the q a we'll love to hear what you've been doing and how you've been processing this summer um and this is a great segue because So we've thought about the summer, whether it's biking, I hope you had a helmet on, sorry to sound like that, but um, it's, uh, are we also, so how does that transition to fall and how has the summer helped you think about what you want the students to experience in the fall? And Hannah, I, I remember yesterday you were mentioning, you were like, I keep thinking about my orientation and how this year's orientation will be different but your concern and all of your concerns are, how do I give students a really work in concert with Charlene and Carmen, but a really rich experience as they begin, as we all begin sort of these uncharted waters, right? Anyone can start there. Um, I'm happy to get the ball rolling on that one. Uh, But I remember orientation being such a formative time. such an exhausting time um, 
but so special. The orientation coordinators that we had that year were amazing and um, they did a really great job at establishing community and establishing vulnerability kind of from the get-go um, and asking us to be really present with one another. And I think that can be uh, difficult, especially over Zoom. Um, but I have a lot of faith in the orientation coordinators. I think uh, they're three amazing people who love community um, and are super innovative. Um, so I trust that they will be able to um, you know, connect students in a way that is both engaging and hopefully not leading to fatigue. Um, and, you know, um, I, I also have a lot of faith in Ryan and Bridget to uh, create really fun spaces. So Ryan, some of the fun spaces will be? <laughs> Within the confines of your Zoom square, that's the <laughs> space. Um, I, uh, I um, still, yeah, still, still figuring it out in a lot of ways. I mean, I knew one of the questions that we were thinking about was how do we interact outside the classroom? Mm -hmm. And I was like immediately going back to those moments when you actually run into people outside the classroom. And that's like so much of seminary life. Um, and what's so special about Union is like encounters and scheming with people and really in like kind of coming together in a space in a shared space um so and that's obviously very different this year so really thinking about how do we not like saturate our schedules with like zoom happy hours and kind of like going over and that over and over and over again um but really and I'm thinking about like having meetups in New York City socially distanced meetups for the folks that are in New York City but I really want to um, extend as much um, welcome and fun and community to people that are gonna be learning remotely with us this year. Uh, I think it's very important. I mean, I was just reminiscing on my own orientation experience and what it was like to first move to New York City and then suddenly you're in this hot room listening to Mike Maloney and Michael O and this fire marshal like talking <laughs> to each other and ripping off each other and you're like, where am I? Uh -huh. uh, and I really would like that I know, how do we get students in the experience more and how like a funny and wacky place Union right. is too. And we're all like very strange and wonderful and beautiful people here. Um, so how do we extend that to the people that are learning with us remotely? And I'm thinking like, you know, dance parties between classes on Zoom. Have you guys, have y'all done like dancing with people at um, a distance yet? I, I have like a thought. I have. Okay, yeah. it's great. Oh yeah, um, I love it. Yeah. So we can do that. Like that. And yeah. as a, it's not like a chapel experience. Maybe this is a chapel in the future too. But right. as like um, a very spontaneous, fun thing. Um, so really thinking about those type of events. Um, and then in New York City, um, I know I dreamed of community mills and clothing swaps and whatnot. But I think just being able to be in community with each other in whatever ways that we can find, um, whether that be a nice socially distanced bring your own food potluck or a walk or a bike ride, um, continuing to join these protests together. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this can be very important this fall to find those ways of being in community with each other. And how fun, I can just imagine how fun it will be to have Bridget walking in California and you walking in New York and it's 9 a.m. there and it's 12 noon there. It'll be such, you know, the light is different in both places at those different times. So that sounds like really, I think it sounds interesting to me. Nodia, what are some of the things you have in mind? Well, um, as Ryan was um, speaking, radical imagination was coming up in my mind. Mm -hmm. And as much as I want to say I have um, ideas in mind, there are very like special to the union community that is very conducive to who we are together and radical imagination is having me just like ryan is saying thinking within the walls of these boxes are is making me just think of the ways in which we're losing something also and how we have to think radically about the ways in which we want to show up for each other and how important that is to do that 
Um, and I may not have an actual an idea, mm -hmm. but I do love the, the riding the bike. I rode my bike in Central Park a couple weeks ago. It's horrific. Uh -huh. of the hill, really? like, no, that hill will take you somewhere that you don't want to go. <laughs> um, but it's it's really fun. Uh -huh. uh, but I think, and, and also doing a radical imagination is community building. So how can we bring in the community to say, hey, this is the ways we want to come together as a community, right? And creating like a document and we're signing it and saying, this is how we're going to create community together, right? Like it's a community building because Union is union because of the people and because we are displaced in different places right now. In order to do that, we have to come back together again to say, this is how we want community to, to look like. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at right now. I have to just say something to uh, about what Nordia just said, because I know Nordia to have no trouble whatsoever in doing amazing things <laughs> in the greater community, right? The Harlem Morningside Heights community. And so I have no doubt that she'll continue to do that. And our orientation leaders as well, who are wonderful, um, are already planning to do some informal things over the weekend after um, our, our online orientation to help engage students in the greater community. So uh, I have no doubt that Nordia will be a part of that as oh, well. Oh, I'm sure, I'm <laughs> absolutely sure. Right, so this is a great segue again. Um, Carmen, so you helped to bring in this class this year. And so you know our students, our incoming students, more than any of us do yet because you've already been introduced to many of them. Can you, are we on the right track? So what is, can you tell us about them as a collective? And are some of these ideas that we're mentioning, are we on the right track of, of things that they would be interested in? The short answer is yes. And the uh, slightly longer answer is that we have brought in a class who is special. Um, and I know we say that every year I've been able to experience three or four different cohorts at Union and every class brings something special. This one, um, as Union wrestles in our mission and vision, mission and vision statement with you know, wrestling with the big questions of the day. This class comes in wrestling with COVID-19, wrestling with Black Lives Matter, and they are on fire. They are so determined to be at Union and so determined to get all that they can get and to create the space and to fill the community, even though many of them are online. You, you sense that desire when talking to them and that energy. And I just think that just creating the spaces is all you'll have to do. So I believe that everyone is on the right track because this group is going to if you create the stage, they'll be there as the, the antidote says, if you build it, they will come. Well, they yeah. are here and they're just looking for the space. And I believe it's gonna be a dynamic year. Wonderful. Well, we're all excited <laughs> from, from the administration to the students. This is really, we do not have a school unless, unless we have students. So this is really exciting. And thank you for your hard work in doing that along with Vanessa. We appreciate that. Right. Bridget, so what are some of your thoughts as we think about the new year? Yeah, so a, a little bit, have Brian had mentioned um, earlier with the ministers of fun, but um, as Dean Visconti had mentioned earlier, I'm also one of the peer chaplains mm -hmm. um, this year. There are three of us total. And we're really looking at creating intentional spaces for students to meet together where there's already a shared interest. Um, because at least for me, someone that is not in New York, um, that was one of my concerns of mm -hmm. what is it going to be like for students that, you know, they're just in a Zoom call and they may not know anyone and how will they start to have conversations with each other and how will they get to know their students. So we're thinking that if there is an intentional space where people that already have a shared topic can go and meet and interact then that will be a way for them to naturally start forming those relationships. So part of that, um, we're, we'll be doing that with Ministers of Fun and we'll be doing that with the peer chaplains group. So the peer chaplains, it'll, it's just a way to provide peer-to-peer -peer spiritual care. Um, but we really feel like part of that spiritual care is looking at the student as a whole, um, looking at the student as someone that's in need of some building community in need of community members within this community. So that'll look like maybe there's some joy and grief circles, maybe there's circles around um, social racial justice, uh, maybe just even meditation and relaxing. What does it look like to be going to school on Zoom and interacting on Zoom? And 
um, just rethinking the Zoom interactions in general, all this online interaction. So really just um, tailoring those spaces to what we're finding that students need in that moment. Yeah, I think Bridget, that's such a good answer of like having those focused um, and intentional spaces that I think we're so careful and intentional in creating when we're together in person and then we're really having to apply that to the like internet age. Um, and I'm thinking to the, about like the innovation that caucus leaders had last year. Um, so it's traditional that students who write theses will present at pub, uh, which is, you know, a gathering where we get together and drink some beer and hang out. Um, and so we did that again this year and we did it on Zoom, um, but we encouraged everyone to kind of gather and we wanted to hear about the work that they've put in. Um, there's been trivia on Zoom and uh, just all sorts of different things. And students are also really using the Senate budget, which I think has um, really been a blessing in this time. I think it's, it's always helpful, but I think it's um, a way that we can also gather is that students have been, you know, taking the money, um, for their caucus and um, if I know a lot of caucuses held movie nights together and so they would um, send out you know 10 15 dollars to each person people would order in food um, to their all respective homes and they watch a movie together and I think that the money has been um, really helpful in bolstering community and I, I never thought I would have said that. Um, but in this like pandemic age, it um, has been a way for us to, you know, gather around a meal, especially, um, which is something we as a Senate do very often or used to do very often. Um, yeah. Anna, can you talk a little bit more for our new students, our incoming students, a little bit more about, can you explain the caucus and how the Senate, how that part of it works? if you will, please. Yeah, definitely. Um, so there are caucuses um, that are either based or based in um, identity uh, or topic based. Um, so there's um, a Black caucus, Black Women's caucus, Latinx caucus, Fierce, which is Queer Black caucus. Um, I'm definitely leaving some out. Latinx caucus, I don't know if I already said that. Um, and then there's ones that are um, focused on um, homelessness and ecological justice. And um, yeah, there's definitely a few more, mm -hmm. but those are co-chaired by folks um, who are you know, passionate around that topic and creating community. Um, so that's also a, a way to be connected to people. Traditionally, it's, you know, been potlucks and um, that kind of thing. But so we're having to, you know, think about that differently. Um, but it's a way for people to uh, also be in smaller communities within the wider student body. Um, so, you know, we're, we're a small school, but we're, we're big in a lot of ways in that there's commuters and people hold um, jobs outside of union or are part-time students. And so it's a way for folks to gather um, in specifically focused ways. Um, and each caucus has a budget uh, to kind of help um, them gather in community traditionally. Yeah, it's been used for food a lot of the time. Um, but even this year, um, I know the Black caucuses uh, were able to order stoles for um, their graduating students and they were all shipped to their homes. Uh, so that's kind of another way and that's always been a tradition of ordering the stoles. But um, another way to kind of be in community is still doing that practice um, and those student leaders are awesome and it's really helpful to be yeah to you know be in community and caucus leaders bring their concerns to us as the student exec team and we bring that to the admin and so it's a, a really great way to make sure that 
we're being held accountable and we're appropriately representing our community um, and also a way for us to make sure that the students are being heard when we're in conversation with the different app. Super important, right? That the student voice is being heard here on campus. Um, so we've said the word community a lot during our 30 minutes together. And I just want to mention to our audience, um, to say again, thank you for joining us. Please start submitting your questions. Um, we're ready to start to begin answering those. But as we prepare for that part of it, can we sort of, as we think about community, right? And as we look at the expanded definition of it, especially this year, because as you mentioned, we have students here and there and everywhere. And we want everyone to feel part of this experience, um, that it, it doesn't make a difference whether you're physically on campus and in New York City or you know, across the street or across the world, um, that you are union and we are one union. Um, so as you think about community, what, either what phrase or sentence but what does it really mean for you? And I would love for all the entire panel to answer that. And Carmen, why don't we start with you? Carmen has been, is an alum, so he has been both a student here at Union and now a professional colleague of ours. So he has both perspectives that he's holding. Yeah, Carmen. Thank you, Rita. Um, when I think of community, what comes to me is action, um, mm -hmm. that it's intentional. Community is not something that just happens, but it is something that we practice um, religiously, no pun intended, um, to be within. Um, it's not always beautiful. It's not always, you know, harmony and roses and all of that, but community is where we grow. Um, and I dare say it's a very, very sacred thing to be in community because it is a coming together of spirits for growth. So I believe it's very intentional and it's an action that we must all practice daily. Thank you. Yeah, Charlene, as our Dean of Students, um, what about you? As I mean, I'm sure you think of this all the time, as you inherit in the job description. <laughs> yeah, I also think of it, though, in terms of, of my own life, right? And the things that I need are not so different than the things that our students need, you know? And what, you know, what Carmen said about it being intentional, and I also would add to that, that it, it requires a level of responsibility, right? Our communities that are important to us are only grow and enrich us if we are equally responsive to them. So those are the kinds of things I like to hope that we can foster um, in our students as, as they build community during the time that they're here at Union. And I um, will just have to say that our um, wonderfully hardworking orientation ambassadors developed for this year, particular, the, the branding, if you will, for um, orientation is love holds us in union. Ah. And um, I thought it was quite appropriate to um, this moment in time. And um, we're, you know, and we're building, we're building things around that sort of theme. So. That's wonderful, thank you. Yeah, Bridget, as you think of that word, what comes to mind, especially as a one of the chapel ministers for this year? Yeah, for me, I'm thinking of connection. Um, I'm thinking of um, just showing up as someone that isn't in New York. Um, I'm thinking of hold, me holding myself accountable and making sure that I am showing up for my peers, um, whether that looks like me showing up in the classroom, whether that looks like me showing up on Zoom, um, you know, just really being present um, and opting into this new experience, even though it's not, you know, ideal, um, it's not in person, but continuing to show up and hold myself accountable. Thank you. Yeah. Ryan, what about you? And Ryan, before you answer, I know you're also thinking about, um, we talked about this yesterday a bit, of like, there is something besides Zoom. So I know you're also thinking about different platforms of how to build community around a, a different experience than just the, it'll be electronic experience, but in addition to Zoom. Yeah. Um, yeah, first of all, I think, yeah, Bridget, you, 
we're very similar. I think in presence um, and accountability are very important um, with community. Um, and also I, I was thinking learning, co-learning with people. I, I learned so much from being in community um, at Union, um, from my peers, from, my, from faculty, from other, from alum. Uh, so yeah, co-learning and it's like wrapped up in this idea of presence and accountability too. Like you learn a lot from being accountable to each other. Uh, and I think, yeah, I guess thinking of ways of how we can continue co-learning with each other and being and holding each other accountable across this fast distances. Um, and, you know, I really don't have any good answers yet. I know, I, I think, how can we be engaging with each other intellectually outside of the classroom? Or should we have a place where we post things so students write? Um, also, yeah, but I, if anyone knows of any platforms, I'm still researching other stuff, please um, post in Facebook on the questions. I think that's where the Q&A is, right? Yes, yep. Um, so yeah, so I'm still thinking about it. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, but definitely, I'm also maybe looking for some pen pals. Um, I think that would be interesting letter writing during this moment, especially because we need to save the post office. I had to... <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so pin pals is something I'm thinking about a lot lately too. Yeah. Okay. I oh, I love that. Yeah. No idea. I love that, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so two words that come to mind and they're in a particular context of union. Um, I think community for me is play and fun and laughter. Mm -hmm. So those are three words then. So play, fun and laughter. Um, and I'm particularly speaking in a, in a sense that union, the workload can get intense. You can have a million things do at once and then you have to go co-chair a meeting and then you have to make sure you have self-care and then you have to make sure you text your mom back and then, you know, you gotta do all these things at once in, in a week. And I think for me in the past two years of union, laughter, play and fun has been the only things that have kept my sanity. And it could be in a group chat where we're all just, you know, just talking crazy. But, um, and I think in the context of play is that you have to realize like we are students. Like we're in graduate school. This is some hard stuff. Like yes. not everybody wants to do this, but we wake up every day and decide to do this. Right. Come on, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so play is really important. Like laughing and and not to take yourself so seriously sometimes and to walk in union. Sometimes you gotta bust Beyonce sometimes as I'm walking to class, you know, <laughs> just to give you the energy at 9 a.m. for church history. Come right. on. Right. So I'm being so those are my community. And I think I see that shows up for me has always been like the Black Caucus or the Black Women's Caucus. We're always just laughing about something. And it may not even have to be about our our um classwork. It doesn't even have to be about a paper. It doesn't have to be about union. It could just be about pop culture, the yeah you know, something you saw in the media, you know, and I think that's really important to understand, like, you are, are a whole person. You're just not a union student. You are a whole person. And right. fun is possible and fun is necessary. So I urge everybody to find, have fun, play, laugh, you know, get your work done, but still fun and, and enjoy yourself. Like, you're only in grad school once, maybe, maybe once, twice, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so two things. So one, thank you for the shout out to the moms. As a mom, I love that our young people are thinking of us when they're not with us. So thank you for that. Um, and two, so Kevin, can you cue up Beyonce? Um, so as we exit, we have some questions to answer. We're going to do that. But as we're exiting, like the last 30 seconds, I'm sure you can figure out some Beyonce. So we can go out on fun because I love, love, love that. And if we stand up, we can go out on fun and dancing, the two things that I love to do. So I hope we can, Kevin, well, he can, he can figure this out, I'm sure. So Hannah, so same question to you. How are we thinking about community? Yeah, I, um, I have a very different answer, um, but I loved everyone's answer. But I think something that is really key in community for me is being heard um, and that taking a multitude of um, kind of, that's what I'm looking for, um, 
just forms. Yeah. Um, so I initially thought about conflict and um, how there's often conflict in the classroom and conflict in friendships and conflict in theologies um, and how being in community both means accountability and a willingness to hear other people out and also a, a necessity to be heard. Uh, and I think union, um, when we're doing it right, we're able to hold the conflict and be together in that and grapple with really hard things. Um, so I, I totally agree with everything that's been said, especially the laughter. Um, and yeah, it's, it's being present in the hard times and laughing. I know my Bridget and I lived on the same floor um, for our second year at Union, and um, the kitchen was a place of a lot of laughter and a lot of tears and frustrations. Um, and we would have tea together every night, even if we were exhausted. It was like, you know, 10 p.m. tea. Um, and that's something that I think you know, gathering around a multitude of feelings and situations means being in community is like showing up when it's really hard and when you sometimes don't want to be there, um, but you're accountable to them and um, yeah, based in, in love and respect. To our incoming students, I hope what you've heard today will inspire you. Um, we are inspired by you as Carmen has introduced you to us. Um, and I hope you are inspired by what you heard. Um, every person here in the entire community um, welcomes you with open arms and most especially open hearts. Uh, we do have a couple of questions that I, we have about three minutes left. Um, I'm hoping we can go out on Beyonce. I still have faith in that. Um, so what advice do you have, and this is a question to all of you, I think, what advice do you have for people in parish ministry? Um, what are some of the things that we can do better to build up our communities? I think we've answered that part of it, but Bridget, why don't you handle that? Um, what advice do you have for people in parish ministry? Yeah, um, I would say, at least for myself, I, part of the MDiv program is to do a um, internship and I chose to do my internship at a church. Um, so I completed that this past semester, but something that I really found um, that was helpful in the church that I was working at was really reaching out to the members of that church, members of the community of that congregation. Um, really, that was, there was a lot of older people. It was a mix, there's a lot of older people and a lot of really young people. Um, so I found that people really valued just picking up the phone and saying, hey, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. I was thinking of you, just wanted to check in. Um, even sending cards, as Ryan had mentioned earlier, um, using the mail, that was really something that people valued. So I really think that just being intentional and letting people know that you're thinking of them, that has been, that has made all the difference. And there being so much distancing and there's so much focus on, oh, don't get too close. Oh, make sure that there's a certain amount of space between everybody. Um, but just having people know that you really do care about them and you're invested in their well-being um, and taking actions to show that you really are invested in their well-being. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for that answer, Bridget. And thank you all for joining us today. There's a comment by um, Dean Pamela Cooper White that I would like to share with you. Um, she said, I am so moved by this whole discussion, your hopefulness, your smiles, your strong intentionality around community actually brought tears to my eyes. And I think that's um, for all of us. So thank you, Charlene. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Hannah. Um, Kevin, do we have Beyonce? Or should I just hit my little uh, Alexa here in the apartment? And thank you, Rita. Uh, right. <laughs> so, Kevin? Yes. Can yeah, we have one minute, so can we do it, you, do you think? You got the swag, so she took the swag. We have a little bit. Just hold me close. Okay, so we can get up. <laughs> okay, it's done what? We were, we're gonna work on that. <laughs>
Kevin, thank you for being a trooper. It was a little hard, but I'm glad. No, I no worries. I got you. <laughs> thank you for being a trooper. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we can't wait until you get here. So sending love and light to you all. Welcome our returning students. Welcome our new students, wherever you may be in the world. You are union. We are union one, union strong. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>